appeared. Amen to Dr. Anderson and the team that has been working together. Amen. In putting this thing together, once again, I say I, I envy this move and I do intend to, to bring it to my home church. I, I have always been teaching on um, outreach, but not to this magnitude. And so I'll be uh, reinforcing it in my assembly. Amen. Very good plan. Very good um, program. And, and I want to say to Grace Bible, we are apostolic, that we are in the will of God in doing what we are doing. And so I join with you and I do pray. Amen. Um, I know you prayed a word of prayer, but I just feel led to just say a word of prayer before going any further. Hallelujah. Can we just bow our heads, everybody? Hallelujah. Father in glory, our great mm. King and our High Priest. Lord there. God, we thank you for this hour. Mm. We thank you for your people who have joined to share on the social media platform. God Almighty, you have seen the purpose. You have seen the mission. And the mission, Lord God, is about evangelism. It's about winning of souls. Lord God, as we are about to go forth and to proclaim the good news, telling others about your love, Lord, I pray you'll touch each and every one, touch our hearts, touch our minds, give us a vision for the battlefield, give us a vision for lost souls, that men and women will come to know you. Oh God, who to know? is life eternal. Grant salvation and deliverance to your people as we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. So I want to thank you again. Praise the Lord. Welcome you to another evangelism seminar. Now we, we, we began, amen, our series by looking at Amen. The Christian's purpose or understanding the Christian's purpose. And we highlighted that the Christian's purpose, amen, is to be winners of souls, is to be witnesses for Christ. Praise the Lord. And so thank you very much, Doc. So we see the purpose is the reason. The, 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 the in, intent or design for which something was created. Yeah. Purpose is the reason, the intent or the design. So it therefore means the Christian, the Christian man was saved with the intent and the purpose of being a witness for God, of being a soul winner. Before And we said before anything can be created, there first had to be a purpose. Amen. And so before you were saved, before you and I were called into the vineyard, before Christ saved us, there was first an intent. There was first a design. There was first a reason before we were saved. Praise the Lord. And every Christian must understand that we are born with a purpose. Thank you very much. Amen. So we'll look at the purpose for which we are born as children of God. Number one, to offer, amen, living sacrifices, amen, daily sacrifices unto God. We were called to offer spiritual sacrifices unto God. Number two, we were called to offer the praises of him who had called us. So giving God praise is not about how we feel. It's not about what we are going through. It's not about 
what our situation is, God deserves to be praised whether or not things are well because that is our purpose. We are called to be salt and light of the world. Yes, and we have received the power of God to become witness and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, then you shall be witnesses. So the purpose of the child of God is to offer spiritual sacrifice, is to be, is to offer praises, to show forth the praises and to be salt and to be a witness. Praise the Lord. Then we looked at the fact that the Christian is a debtor to Christ. We owe Christ a debt. I am a debtor. Number two, not only am I a debtor, but I am ready. Every child of God ought to be ready, have a ready mind to do the will of God. And then thirdly, we must not be ashamed. So the three I am of evangelism, I am a debtor. I am ready for I am not ashamed of the gospel. If you forget anything else, let this be your mantra. Amen. Praise the Lord. To be a true witness, the light, our lives must be consistent with the word. True. And then we state that a true witness must possess integrity. Your life must speak what your mouth saying. Thank you. Amen. Can't say one thing and live another thing. Praise the Lord. Then we looked at soul winning. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have covered so much. Praise the Lord. We had soul winning. And we said that soul winning is the act of reaching lost souls with the gospel of Jesus Christ, bringing them into fellowship with God by means of the new birth. So our, our target is to reach lost souls and bring them into fellowship with God by means of the new birth. And James 5.20 tells us that let him know that he which converted a sinner from the error of his way has saved a soul and has delivered him from many Many, many, many hurts, many sins. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then in order to become an effective soul winner, one must establish the importance of the soul. Why is it we want to win souls? Why are we reaching for souls? Amen. And then we look at the Greek word, kedeno. That means to gain, to acquire, to win. Kedeno, which means to acquire, to win. Amen. To gain a lost soul as it pertains to soul winning. It is a transactional term. Amen. So after you have been through the transaction, you it's like you, you went to, to the, um, a financial transaction at the end. You gain income, praise the Lord. But in this context, it is in the winning of souls. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn over. Mm. Praise the Lord. Then we'll look at, amen, the fact that man is a tripartite being. Praise the Lord, everybody. Man is body soul and spirit and so we look at the fact that the body is the outward part the bible says you can kill the body but you can't touch the soul but fear him that can both kill the body and soul in hell then we look at the spirit spirit is like a candle the bible says the candle of god that searches the inward part of the belly amen Proverbs 20, 27. And so the spirit reflects what is in the soul. Then we look at the soul, which is the seat of our 
emotion, that which feels after, that which craves for. Amen. It, that's why it is, it is the centered part that God focuses on the soul. Amen. And so the soul being the seat of our emotion with feels which crave after. Amen. In Psalm 42 verse 1, as the deer panted for the waters, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Amen. The soul, so when you win the soul, you win the entire man. Praise the Lord. When you win the soul, you win the entire man. So there's a battle for the soul. The soul is the, the throne where the king sits. Amen. Whosoever sits on the throne rules the entire being. Amen. The soul is a worship center. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And so we see that because the soul is a worship center, the devil wants to win the soul. And God wants to win the soul. So the battle is for the soul. Amen. To redeem the soul, it is expensive. The soul is so valuable that the Bible said in Psalm 49, the redemption of their soul is valuable, expensive. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so this is why the Christian now, amen, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 tells us that we are laborers together with God. So God is on a mission to save souls and we are joining with God hand in hand to work towards winning soul. The purpose of the soul winner, as I said, is to join in the salvation, join with who? God. To join God in the mission of winning lost souls. Praise the Lord. That's the mission of God. Amen. The Son of Man is come and come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. So the Son of Man came to save sinners. The, the Apostle Paul said, this is a um, this is a, an acceptable um, thing and, and worthy of all acceptation that the Son of Man is come to save sinners among whom I am chief. So Paul said the mission of God is to save sinners of whom I am chief. So it's God's mission, the responsibility of the soul winner. The soul winner must be committed. I had committed in the hand of the soul winner, the word of reconciliation. Praise the Lord. And that's in 2 Corinthians 5, 19. He has committed into our hand the word of reconciliation. Amen. A woe is pronounced upon every believer who do not win soul. Let me repeat that. A woe is pronounced upon every believer who do not win souls, who do not make it their, their, their business to reach for lost soul. So you might be in church um, testifying that you're on your way to heaven, but in God's book, you are not doing his will, and his will is lost soul. Remember, you cannot be ashamed. He said, if you are ashamed of him now, he's going to be ashamed of you before his father. Amen. Praise the Lord. So a woe is pronounced upon everyone who do not proclaim the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 9, 16, then... It is the will of God that men everywhere be saved. 
men everywhere, all men, all type of men should be saved. No matter who they are, they are prospects for God. They are God's heartbeat. So every child of God should join together in the mission of winning soul. Tell the people, let's not let the word of God go down on the ground. Let's not, let's not let it go to waste. God has already spoken. It is, it is his mission for us to win soul. Praise the Lord. If our gospel be hid, we must know it is hid to them that are lost. So if we don't share the gospel, we are hiding it from the lost that the Lord Jesus Christ came to seek and to save. Amen. Number five, we see that the soul winner should follow Jesus as our perfect example. Amen. In winning soul, John 4 verse 4, he said, he must need go through Samaria. It, it, it was significant, John 4 verse 4, that the Bible said, he must need go through Samaria. Amen. Because Samaria was Israel's arch enemy. It was the last place for a Jew to want to go. But Jesus, for the sake of winning souls, went through Samaria just to win one soul, a woman that was slated to be a prostitute, a whore, a, a man stealer, a breaker of family people that we wouldn't want to associate with, Jesus went her way. Praise the Lord. So to, to win soul, one must be wise. Amen. Jesus showed up at a time when he knew the woman would come. Amen. Not publicizing her, not coming at the time when Everybody is there to, to make a big show of her. But come at the hour when she alone, he could get the chance to talk to her wisdom. And, and Proverbs 11 verse 30 tells us that the man that winneth souls is wise. Amen. Are they that be wise shall shine as the stars in the firmament. And, and Daniel 12 verse 3 tells us, he that winneth souls is wise. Twin these two scriptures together and mark them in your Bible. Amen. When we look at the wisdom, Jesus showed great interest and concern for one person. Went out of his way for one person. Amen. In soul winning, don't look at the number. If you can get one person that is interested in the gospel, if you can win one person, sometimes we are looking at the numbers. When there is one, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Can I share your testimony as you listen? I remember we went to a street meeting one night and I was to be the preacher and my bishop at the time, Pastor Rankin, looked at me um, and said to me, um, but I remember it's your night to preach. And I said, yes, sir. But I did not recognize he was looking at the cloud and he recognized that the cloud was overcast. And so it began to rain. And he, 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 said, he said to me, don't worry. I was prepared for this long time. So he brought a, a tarpaulin 
and he pull it over the, the sound system and pull it over the microphone. And he provided an umbrella. He said, I was ready for this long time, my brother. He gave me an umbrella, a microphone, and the music system were covered up. And then he said to me, I want you to go ahead and preach. Now, rain was falling. Nobody would be out of their mind to come out of their house in a rainy night to listen to the word of God. So when I look, all I saw was darkness. I saw bushes. The place was a big landscape. Nobody to preach. Nobody at all. But my pastor said, preach. So I humbled myself and I preached. I preached as if there was a mass crowd there. And I preached my heart out. So much so while I was preaching, I closed my eyes because I said, I know I don't see anybody. So I don't I'm not going to look at anything at all. I just closed my eyes and I preached. When I opened my eyes and gave the altar call, one young man coming from out of the shadows, one young man from out of a thick darkness came out and he came to the altar. And that one young man got the Holy Ghost that night. That one young man got the Holy Ghost. We never saw him back for a long time. We tried to contact him, everything, to no avail. And I mean, I said, Lord, it looked like we went, I went out there in vain because the one young man we get and the one young man we can't get in touch with him. But it was about 20 odd years after, 20, maybe about 22, 23 years after, I was in a fasting service and I saw a pastor man walk up to me. A pastor man walk up to me. I said, you don't know me. And I said, I don't remember seeing your face. And he said, I know you do. I said, I said, no man, no man, I, I don't remember seeing you. He said, I know you. And, and so we sat down and I said, where you know me from? And he said, you remember that night when the rain was pouring and you preached your heart out? He said, I was that convert. He said, I am now the pastor of two churches. Hello, my Shanda, glory. I am now the pastor of two churches. One man, one, one, one. Jesus went out of his way for one person. When you show interest in one person, amen, they'll see the value and want to, to know the God that you serve. He went out of his way to win one soul. Right, we repeat that. More concern with covering rather than exposing. He was more concerned about the woman's reputation. Covering her reputation making her feel at home, making her feel welcome to sit and talk with the, the Savior. Amen. Some of us as Christians, we don't want anybody to see us talking to a certain person who that rum drinker, that homosexual, that lesbian, who that girl, prostitute, that murderer. No, 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 no. I don't want anybody to see me in the company of such a person. That No, sir. Let, let's, when they see me, they're going to say that I am like the person. But Jesus was not afraid to be in the company of this woman, knowing her reputation. Amen. He covered her. He protected her. That she felt welcome and start to, you know, talk out. Praise the Lord. Amen. He, he, he worked under a strong sense of urgency and constraint. He must need, I must reach this woman. I must reach out to this woman. Amen. He used her present natural need to bring out the awareness of the spiritual. She came for water. 
But what she really needed was spiritual living water. What a wisdom. Jesus used the natural water to bring out the need in her for spiritual water. Praise the Lord. He allowed the, the ordinary happening and circumstances of life to provide an opportunity for personal soul winning. Child of God, when you're going to win soul, you have to be wise. Amen. And, and you, you, you can start right where the person is, right where their need, right at the point of their need. Do not be judgmental. Christ was not just judgmental. He was welcoming the art of soul winning. The art of soul winning. Amen. He was not judgmental. He was friendly, engaging, and sympathetic. He, 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 he reached out to her with a loving heart. Then he asked a favor. Amen. Of one he would win. He used the present situation. Amen. To start an argument. To break the ice. Can you give me a glass of water? Amen. He knew that would have started an argument. How come you being a Jew asking me a Samaritan for water? Don't you know Jews don't deal with Samaritan? Come on. Praise the Lord. So he started right there. The art of soul winning. Amen. He made room for expression. And so a soul winner must be a good listener. Engaging. Yes. Know how to listen to your audience and hear them express themselves and allow them to express their feeling freely and engage them in question them, them ask, gonna ask intriguing questions. Amen. You must be willing and ready to answer. No matter how simply look, sometimes it might sound like foolishness to you, but just listen to it and answer it. Amen. And please don't let the person feel any less of themselves than who they are. Then he overcame the barriers. He broke down the barrier between Jews and, and the Samaritan in order to minister to her. Christians must break down barriers, denominational barriers, um, different church standard barriers. Please, you don't go out there to preach church standard. You don't scale the fish before you catch the fish. Talk to the soul about the love of God. So don't go there and tell the person, your, your skirt is too short and, your, and, your, and your, your neckline is too low. Leave the person alone. Tell them about the love of God. You want to win the soul. Be wise. He provoked inquiry and created soul hunger. Mm. Present the love of God in such a way that the person will want it. The woman said, Lord, give me this water that I thirst not again. Amen. When Jesus was finished telling her about the living water, she said, Lord, give me this water. Amen. We must present the gospel in such a presentable way that the person will want it when you're finished with him. Acknowledge what was presented and point her in the right direction. The soul winner must acknowledge, amen, what is presented and point the soul in the right direction. Cut out religious mindset. So from the first, first one, the person going to ask you, I would church you come from again. Um, that's not what I'm really here for now. You know. I'm just here to tell you that God loves you. Yeah, I'm from Grace, by the way. Yeah, but I'm here to tell you that 
Jesus loves you. So I leave off the apostolic. I leave off the apostolic. Because once we go tell us, oh, yeah, Jesus name. Oh, yes. I want to come with the one God thing. Yeah. So you know, believe in you know, a father. So now arguments start. I came to tell you about the love of God. Jesus love you. Amen. I'm from Grace Bible Way. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I want to tell you, Jesus loves you with an ex. It doesn't matter who you are, that there's a God who cares for you. There's a God who loves you. Yeah. Me, me don't call out the denomination yet. Because I'm not about denomination. Not that I'm ashamed of my denomination. But in presenting denomination, sometimes you, you oftentimes turn off the listener from the go-get. Present yourself as a child of God, one who is representing God. Can I hear an amen? Can somebody say amen? I don't hear no response. Amen, Can somebody amen, say amen? amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Cut out the religious mindset. Don't go with the ministry. Then be tactful and wise. He did not reproach or scold her for her dirty lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I look at Connor would have said that lady is living a dirty lifestyle. She, she have all of five men. The one that she's living with knows not hers. She take with all her people, a man. Oh, Lord of mercy, what a woman. No, he did not reproach her. He did not scold her. He did not go preaching to her. Um, you sinners and, and you ungodly. And you're going to burn in hell. And, and, and God going to send judgment upon the sinners. No. Christ pointed to her need. I, I want to tell you, I have the water that I have to give you shall be in you a well of water springing up into everlasting life. He so said, when you drink up this water that you're, you know, drawing, you shall thirst again. But the water that I, that I shall give you, you shall never thirst. Please. Read St. John 4 all over again and look at the tact. When the woman was finished, the woman said, give me this water. Amen. She wanted the water. Amen. Be tactful, child of God. Praise the Lord. We must have a passion for soul. The soul winner must have a passion. That's why we went through the detail to tell you how important it is to win a soul. When you win a soul, you win an entire being. Come on, church of the living God. When a soul is one, man, that man will turn the old Jerusalem upside down. I was in America last year. I met a drug dealer, a drug dealer. Yes, a drug dealer. And I witnessed to him. He came to church. I preached the gospel. The young man got saved. And let me tell you, man, the young man was walking through his community, went back among the drug den, and I tell his druggist friend, about this new found salvation. And the drug is friend, like they, they believe the boy, him, him let them down because he pulled out of the crowd. They came to his house to kill him. I was in America at the time. They came to his house to kill him. They used a, a, a button to hit him in the head, knock him out, call his blood was spewing all over. They rushed him to the hospital. When I heard, I rushed to his home. And I, when, I, when I went to the home, you know, 
Everybody was saying, Pastor, it's Jamaica you live. You're not supposed to be here because the men go and come back. And they did come back and shoot up the house. But I was not a, I said in the name of Jesus, I come and I prayed for the young man and I prayed for the family. And let me tell you something. The family is saved up until now. The young man is a transformed individual to God be the glory. Somebody was willing. You have to have a passion. You have to love souls. You have to love soul. And if you don't have any drive for soul winning, my brother, it means that your spirit is dead. Sad to say, if you don't have any passion for soul, something is wrong. Your spirit is dead. Once the spirit is alive, it's going to cry out for soul. Amen. You must have a burden, a deep concern. Oh, Lord. You must be a people person. You must reach out, be able to draw people to you. Yes. St. Matthew 4, 24 says, the fame of Jesus went all over and people from all about came. Jesus was a people person. He drew crowds. Amen. Yet still, his message was stern. Amen. Praise the Lord. You, you must be a person of vision. Yes, Sister Grace, I see that one. God, give us a yearning for soul. Give us a burden. Give us a passion. Oh, God, stir our hearts. Because we are in the kingdom lifting up holy hands. But there are so many that are lost and dying out there. Amen. The, the soul winner must, must know the word. You must have a decent knowledge of the word of God. Because people are going to ask you questions. People are going to ask you about your salvation. If you can't explain it all, tell them your experience. Start from your experience. Do like the Apostle Paul. Tell them what happened to you. Praise the Lord. The soul winner must be adaptable. Adjust to the situation. You cannot be a classes and be a, a soul winner. You cannot be prejudiced and be a soul winner. Amen. So you might go into the, the inner city. And you see dirty children. You see homeless people. And you see people. Um, you cannot um, be prejudiced. Amen. I think it's St. Mark chapter 8. Where Jesus um, went into a certain place and there was some leprous there. And by right, the leprous men supposed to cry out, leprosy, leprosy, come not nigh. Because leprosy is contagious. But Jesus went nigh to the leprous man. And the Bible said, he asked him, what will he do for him? And he said, that I might be healed of my leprosy. And the Bible said, Jesus stretched forth his hands and touched him. Jesus stretched forth his hand and touched him. He did not skepticize. He did not, he did not scorn. Amen. You have as a soul winner, you must be adaptable. Adjust. You must be able to adjust to any situation. You go to somebody's home. It's not so properly kept. It's not your business. Don't look at the dirt on the floor. Don't look at the, the sheets pulled over, whatever. None of your business. You came to win a soul. Please close your eyes if possible. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go forth and reach for lost soul. 
Amen. Tangible faith. Thank you. You must possess patience. Amen. Be willing to wait. Don't, don't be too pushy. Be patient with the soul because you're going to come around. Once you're doing the right thing, you're going to be saved. Don't worry. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, sis. Amen. That's it, sir. We're content. We're moving That's on it. to the next That's one it. tonight. Remember the last time. Amen. So, that's, that's it. And, and every member will be given, every member will be given a handout with all this on it. And um, I'm praying God that God will raise up in grace, by the way, a mighty army of soul winners. A mighty army of soul winners. Before I go to visitation, there's one thing I have learned. St. John 4 from verse 20 tells us that we must say not he that they are yet 40 days and yet come at the, then come at the harvest. But lift up your eyes and look on the field for they are white and ready to harvest. And he said that some man labor and other man enter into their labor. There's something about evangelism. When the church start doing evangelism, other people will come who you have not invited. People will just come to church that you never invite. But it never happened before. But it happened at the time when you start to evangelize because evangelizing is like when you throw seeds. Seeds scatter all over the place and you'll never know where the seed reach and people from far. So you might talk to somebody here and that person is living all the way in New York and that person take the message that you gave them to New York. Somebody from New York heard about grace by the way and decide to find the church yeah god just bring people from near and far so you don't look at your present response to determine your success just understand that it is your duty as a child of god to go forward and witness and when you start doing that you're going to see a bump, a harvest. You're going to see souls like you've never seen souls before. And I declare it over grace, by the way, apostolic. I declare a harvest of souls. Praise the Lord. We look at visitation. Amen. Now, visitation is a direct. Um, fulfillment of the great commission where the Lord said to his disciples go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he that believeth not shall be damned these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devil they shall speak with new tongues they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If they take up any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. Amen. So the Bible said, signs are going to follow you. When you do visitation, um, signs are going to follow you. Now, we don't have the time to read all the scriptures, but we have St. Mark chapter 6, 7 to 13, those who have your pen and paper. Would you please write them down? I'm St. Matthew chapter 10. Amen. Read the entire chapter of St. Matthew chapter 10. Very important. St. Luke 9 verses 1 to 6. But just to highlight some point from the scripture. Number one, 
he, he prayed over them. Number two, he, he sent them out two by two. Children of God, it is, it is good, it is best. Not that you cannot do it, but it is best to go out in twos. Go out in groups. Amen. And before you start doing evangelism, like the Lord did, you need to pray. Pray and ask God to lead you to a hungry soul. Ask God to lead you to somebody who will listen to the word. I have so many testimonies, sorry. But, I, but sometimes I can't help but sharing my testimony. I went to do visitation one, one, one Saturday. And when I went to do visitation, it seemed like nobody turned up. It was raining. And it seemed like nobody turned up where we were to meet. I sat down and I waited out the rain. I saw another brother came. Right, It was about eight of us. And only two of us was there at the time. Then, little after, one more brother came. It was three of us. So I said to the brethren, well, the Bible said we are two or three are gathered. He's in the midst to bless. So I said, let the three of us go because we were already late. And the three of us prayed. And we asked God to lead us to a hungry soul, to lead us to somebody that was in need of God. And we prayed. And we walked about a mile and a half. Where we were going was about a mile and a half. We went to the area. Um, the first set of houses we went to, the people were not responsive. People just pulled the door and like we were noise and to them because the rain was overcast. It had stopped, but people looking out and say, what is crazy young men coming out in the midst of a rainy weather to, to witness? And so we knocked on some gates. People looked out with annoyance and they locked back their gate. And then the Lord just spoke to us and said, all right, Go, go around on the next street. We went around the next street. And the first house we went to, we're not there. A lady came out and she was crying. And she began to worship. And she said, welcome angels of God. Welcome angels of God. And she started to call us angels. So we, we were kind of nervous now when we started saying, no, 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 nothing like that. We, we are from True Tabernacle. We just come to do some. Um, in the, she said, no, don't tell me you're not angels. She said, we have been praying for seven days for God to send help. And the Lord told us he was going to send three angels to our house. And the lady told us her need. She was in dire strait. She was in severe problem. Her house was under attack by demons. And the three of us went by in the house. When you went to the house, the house turned upside down. Water was everywhere because I can't tell them they believe that water would, would run the demon. Never did. All the house was flooded. The sheets, the beds were turned up. Everything turned upside down. And we prayed. And we prayed. And God delivered an entire family of about seven persons. Seven or eight. God delivered the entire family. It was like a church service. Deliverance break out. The family got the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. When we went back to church at Olamashan, I'm feeling goose pimples all over me. 
It was remarkable. It was amazing what the Lord has done. And I want to say to us children of the most high God. Yeah, number one, pray. Don't take your prayer lightly. Pray and ask God to lead you to a hungry soul. Number three, number two, you go by, by two. Number three, be targeted. Know where you're going, right? So we're going to target X, Y, Z. We're going to target that mission. Nothing is wrong along the way. You stop and invite one and two, but your mission is to target a community, an area. And you're going there in the name of Jesus Christ. And you're going there to witness to somebody. Amen. You must be targeted. Look at the Great Commission. Amen. Jesus said, when you go, be prepared. The other mindset, people are going to run you. People are going to turn you away. Please do not show any sign. Please do not show any sign of resent or shame or disgrace. Please do not laugh when people turn your way. Please do not scoff at people when they turn your way. Be polite. And say, so nevertheless, the Lord loves you. And we love you too. All the best to you. Have a nice day. Be as polite as ever. Amen. Look at Jesus. Praise the Lord. Look at Jesus and his mission. Jesus sent out 12 disciples. He said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. Be, be targeted now. I want you to go in the way of the Jews. And in every city that you go into, St. Matthew 10, he said, don't go into the city of the Samaritan. Amen. So God tell them where they must target at the point. But go rather to the last house of Israel. Amen. He, 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 he sent them out and he told them another time, he said, go on the highways and the edges. That's a different target now. You're going to everywhere. Amen. St. Luke chapter 14. 23, go to the highway and the edges. Beat anybody you see, anybody, anybody you see. Don't walk past a child without telling a child, hello, please. Nobody's insignificant when you're on visitation. Everybody counts. Even a little child, call to the child. Maybe somebody's looking on and watching you and see you call to the child and, and say, wow, everybody come and just walk past the children and, and that lady just stop and say hi to the children. Wow, that person sitting on waiting on you to come to them because of what they see. Call to everybody. Hi, hello, go every... Go heavy on the how they do. <laughs> Go heavy on the how they do. How are you doing? Hello. How are you? The Lord bless you. Have a nice day. Yeah. Come on. No, no matter who, even if the person don't respond, smile. Smile. God bless you. Amen. Move on nicely. Please do not show any sign of resent. Amen. Said Acts 26, 15 to 18 says, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this same purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both to those things 
that thou hast seen and of those things which I shall appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom I now send you. Amen. So God has laid a purpose in our heart to go forth and to win and to reap lost soul. James 1.27 says, Pure religion and undefiled before God is to visit the fatherless, visit the homeless. Come on. Don't walk past the homeless and the needy. Pray. Stop and offer a word of prayer for somebody that is homeless, for somebody that is needy. Stop and leave a word of prayer. Don't be skeptical. Don't be scornful. What the Bible said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Don't be scornful. Do not. Amen. Don't pass in and anybody. You have to love souls. Love what? Souls. And yes, the homeless is a soul. Yes, the naked, the, the dispossessed is a soul. And, and sometimes that's where our harvest lies. Amen. The Brooklyn Tabernacle, the pastor for Brooklyn Tabernacle told us that when God is a Trinitarian, a church of God man, but he said when God called him and told him to go to Brooklyn, he said, Lord, I wonder if you're right because he, 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 he was from an uptight community. Um, his church was from one of the high class communities. And God said, go to Brooklyn. He and his family went to Brooklyn. And when they went to Brooklyn, they said, I've never seen such poor, dispossessed, such distraught people, drug abuse, such conditions before. And he went among the, the druggists. He went among the dispossessed and he witnessed. And today, Look at the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Look at the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, the number one choir in the whole world. And that is just a choir. When you look at the, the congregation, the man went into a, a desperate, um, dispossessed community and turned it around. Child of God, do not be skeptical, love souls, don't matter who they are, that soul can make a difference in your church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then we see the importance of visitation, importance of spreading the word. So many persons out there, the Bible said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So many people committing suicide. Had somebody reached them with the good news before they committed suicide, maybe they would not have. Maybe had somebody reached out to that drug pusher, tell him that there is hope, Tell him that there is a God that saves. Tell him that there is a God that delivers. Maybe it would save him from the brink. I don't want to talk to grace by the way from the bottom of my heart. I pray God that after this series of meeting, a God will break out in this assembly. Oh, an army of evangelists, an army of soul winners. Oh, Lord, I pray 
that we will see souls coming to know the Lord. Please don't be skeptical. Maybe you'll have to use a car for a little while as a trans means of transport. But don't mind, my brother. God is going to reward you. Hello. Sometimes you might have to use a little truck. Carry all kind of people in it to church. Mm, one of the reasons why a lot of people not winning souls. We, we, we keep our, our, our blessings to ourselves. We have our V clan. Even if a church sister who's going a little distance and need help, need transport, we drive past them. I, I don't mean to, to mess with anybody, but I, I got to tell you the way I feel it. And it's one of the reasons why sometimes you don't get results. Because unsafe watch all of these things. Unsafe can come to church and look on. And how you treat your church, brother. I said, and wait, if, if, if she treat him so, or him treat his brother like that. Imagine if me become a minister or a part of this church, how they would treat me. People look on the warmth. People look on the love. And I'm not saying... Grace, by the way, don't have love, please. I'm not saying that Grace, by the way, is not a church of love. I'm just encouraging. I'm just encouraging you all. Amen. Just my way of teaching that in, in winning souls, you have to make your vehicle, make it available. Make it a way available to pick up the needy, pick up the dispossessed, pick up the unwanted, take them to church. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Yeah. Take them up. Yeah. A church sister was going to church. She passed a madman in the in the in, in the in the rubbish pan, picking out of the rubbish pan, trying to find food. And the Lord said to her, turn back and give that gentleman something. And she turned around and she gave him some money and said, You can buy something and eat. And the madman said, Thank you very much. So called madman. So called. Let me you let me not use the term madman. He said, thank you very much. But then on her, she, she, she went on her way and then the Lord turned her back again and said, you didn't even witness to the young man. And she said, but, you know, then she turned back again and said, I want to tell you Jesus love you and to leave a word of prayer with you. Then she prayed for him. And the man said, you can't go to church with you. And looking at the state of the man, he was so ragged, dirty, cut up, smelly, everything. Um, for a, she took a while and then she said, come if you want to come to church, God loves you. And, and, and the gentleman came to church with her. He followed her. Of course, she had a little distance between herself, but she never walked too far away from him. She never made him feel uncomfortable. And she walked with him to church. When he came to church, she went to one of the ushers. She told him her experience. And the usher said, well, we have to get some clothes put on him and thing. And they made arrangement to get him a beard. He, he got a bath. Um, he got something to eat. And he got clothes to put on. And after putting on the clothes, he went into church. He was the first person to go to the altar. He got saved. That man got saved that day. Guess what? He's now the deacon for the church. 
And guess who is his wife? The same lady that turned back and witnessed to him. She is his wife. They have three beautiful children. What am I saying? In soul winning, do not be skeptical. The soul you scorn could be the soul that the Lord wants to say. Oh Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do's and don'ts about visitation. Do's and don'ts about visitation. There are some don'ts that we must not do. In, if we're going to be a successful visitation witnesser, and again, it depends on the effort we, we put in to win the last, and it depends on our strategy. But there are some don'ts, some don'ts that we must, that we must not. Number one, never start by asking Anybody, are you a Christian? Never start a conversation by asking him, are you a Christian? That's number one. No. Do not start the conversation that way. You know what? You turn off the conversation by from the very moment you start there. Yes, I am. Done. I don't need to know if you're a Christian. I came to tell you about the love of God. Would you mind, would you spare me a minute to share? Let the individual declare that they are a Christian and they no longer wish to hear what you have to say. But do not ask the person, are you a Christian? That's a number one don't. Never discriminate. Just talk about that. I need to stress on that. Never discriminate. Don't look on people's face and determine who is to save and who can be saved and who won't be saved. That's God's prerogative. Amen. Talk to anybody you see, anybody, anybody you meet. Tell them about the love of God. Amen. Never be judgmental we are quick to condemn we said that time and time again Christians we are too quick to sentence people to hell we are too quick to sentence people and tell them you can't and you can't and, you, and your life is this and you no tell them what God can do let them know it doesn't matter how far you are. God can reach you. And you know what? If you were the only person on earth that would accept the Lord, he would have left the splendors of heaven just to come and die for you. Can I hear an amen? Can somebody lift your hand and say amen? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Me, Hallelujah. Praise yes, God. Lord. God loves us so much. That is if, if it is even you alone that wants to be saved, God would come to love to save you. Never be judgmental. Never be too blunt. As a Christian, don't be too blunt. What I mean by that. So what are you saying? If I'm a Trinity and I'm going to hell, well, that's not my purpose to sentence anybody to hell. I'm not here to tell you who is going to hell. So we're saying, we you said if I don't baptize in Father, so not, no, that's not what I came with. I came to tell you that Jesus loves you. I came to tell you that Jesus can save you no yes. matter what. Amen. And I want to let you know that if you want a new experience, if you want a fresh experience with God, that there is more 
you can experience something greater than you have ever experienced in all your life. I just want to, to let you know that if you so desire, you can visit our assembly anytime. This is an invitation. If and when you would like to come and visit us, please feel free to come and visit us. And, and, and don't feel any way. Don't worry about the individual coming to church under the banner as a Trinitarian. Hello? And if a Trinitarian come within your midst, please don't treat them like an ungodly cast out. Let them feel the warm. They want to clap, make them clap. We don't want to sing. Let them sing. If they want to give God a praise, allow them to give God a praise. Bible says, let everything that heart breath. Where church get it from says only sanctified and holy people can give praise. Hmm? Bible says, let everything that heart breath. Praise the Lord. Give everybody, make them feel at home. When they feel the fire of Pentecost, that will make the difference. And I submit to you that I have more than four members of my assembly who were Trinitarian believers, who were members of Trinitarian churches. Amen. And without me telling that they need, without me telling them that they need to be baptized in Jesus' name, they just turn up to me and say, Pastor, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. And I'm not saying that the time will come that you have to say it to them. But without me even preaching it over the pulpit, I say it's only one God. And, and, and God is in, Jesus is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I'm not going to some time not to worry about that. I teach it in Sunday school because you, you get a chance to ask questions. In Bible study, I teach it. But I don't preach it from the pulpit. I preach salvation. I preach the infilling of the Holy Ghost. I preach Pentecost and the fire of God and what God can do in your life. And let me tell you, that alone is enough. Ah, Lord Jesus. Can I share with you my experience? I'm not saying that God make won't call some of us we, 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 to preach end time preaching, which is good. But sometimes we go, go up on the rostrum preaching about hell and fire going burn up in hell. Uh, sometimes it does more harm than good. What kind of preacher this? But it's the truth. I've found that churches that have greater altar response are ch churches who speak to the need, the need for God. How much you're thirsty, how much you're hungry, appeal to the spiritual need. Oh, friend, there is, there is an overwhelming source that can satisfy the longing of your soul. Jesus is able to save, to keep, to satisfy. Jesus can bring hope and deliverance. Jesus can lift you from where you are when you preach to a man's need and meet him right there. Let him know that Jesus loves him with an everlasting love and you appeal to him and call him to the altar. Can I pray for your brother? Can I pray for your sister? Amen. They don't feel segregated. They don't feel um, left out. They come under the, the warmth of the pull of the Holy Ghost. Lama Shandai. And when they feel the pull and the warmth, and they come and they start to break out and they begin to cry. That's where you want them, brother. 
Hallelujah. And before you know, salvation, rich and free, start to pour down. Hallelujah. Don't be too blunt. Amen. Don't allow your prospect to take you into unknown ter territories. Don't. We are dealing with the don'ts. Number one, don'ts. Don't. Um, don't ask them if they are Christian. Never discriminate. Don't discriminate. Don't be too judgmental. Don't. Don't. Don't allow your prospect to take you to unknown territories. Keep the conversation at the point that you're dealing with. They want to tell you, so what? If I come to church, I get one husband, I get one wife. That's not your mission. Um, and if you want to go there, be careful. But don't, don't allow them to take you into unknown territories. Amen. So we want to say, Jesus is a black man, I'm a white man. Hello. That's not your purpose. You come to tell him that Jesus loves them. Amen. Don't allow uh, an uninterested party to take over your conversation. Sometimes you're getting true to an individual and somebody else wants to butt in and bring in other conversation and what you're saying. If you can focus your listener to what you are saying and, and say to the other person, I'll answer you at another time. But at this time, I, I trust you can appreciate I'm talking about this point at this time. If you don't mind, allow me to finish what I'm saying. So maintain the focus where you are you're, you're focusing. Don't use too much church slang, slangs and jargons. I'm saved and sanctified. Once I was lost, but no wife, I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Hello, unsaved don't know well. Somebody might hear it, but they don't know one thing you're talking about. Leave out the church slogans and slangs and, and jargon. Once I was blind, but now I see. Um, um, yeah. I feel it in my foot, but it's not my spine. And I feel it in my back, but it's not my spine. I feel it in my, in my belly. Oh, it's the joy of the Lord. They want to know about what Jesus can do for them. Please tell them about the love of God. Tell them what God has done. Tell them about the crucifixion. Tell them how Christ died. How we love them so. Amen. Put away the church slangs and jargons. Amen. Use more the love. Don't scale the fish before you catch them. I told you that already. Amen. Don't try to convert them before you catch them. Wait till when you convert them, then you can tell them the, the next third thing about the church. Never get into quarrel over doctrinal issues or other controversial subject. Find that the person is becoming too controversial. Have a nice day. May the Lord bless you. Um, if you want me to have a Bible study, I could come by and we sit down and have a Bible study. How about that? And when you come to the Bible study, you bring a more notable teacher who knows the word and you bring them to help you that in case the person want to ask question. Amen. Do not allow fear to take you over. Don't get jittery. Just relax. Know that you're talking about the love of God. Know that you're talking about God and that God loves them. Just relax. God is not asking you to do more than what you can do. So just do what you can do. You don't have to have eloquent speech. You don't have to can't put your words together. Yes, that might be necessary. But say what you can say in the best way you can. So don't be fearful. Amen. Don't lose focus on the field. Don't get carried away. You hear quarreling going on. 
Don't pay any attention. Two neighbor catch up in a quarrel. Don't pay any attention. Um, a young lady walking past, you know, impish him. That's not your focus. You're focusing on the word. Amen. Um, you hear people around you with all kind of distraction. Do not lose focus. Focus on the person you're talking to. Keep your focus on the individual while you're on the field. Never conduct, amen, never conduct a prayer meeting Bible study by yourself. It's not recommended. Amen. If you're a female, don't go to any male house by yourself. Amen. To conduct Bible study prayer meeting. It's not recommended. Male, don't go to the opposite sex house by yourself. Amen. It's not recommended. And it's still not recommended to go there by yourself. Always try to have a second person with you. The do's. All right, now the do's. I just stay with the don'ts. Always be polite in your approach. Always have a smile. Hello. Go heavy on the how they do. Hi. Hello. Lord bless you. Have a nice day. How are you doing? God, God is good. Pray the Lord. Don't make it up. Make it real. Make it real. Amen. Amen. Give compliment where necessary. So speak positive things. Wow. Lovely day. Sun is shining. Oh, God is good, man. Can you imagine he woke us up this morning in our right mind? And, you know, talk about the goodness of God. He has protected us and kept us alive. Yeah. Give compliments where necessary. Always be willing to listen to your prospect. Be willing to listen. Don't talk out your prospect. Give a listening ear. Amen. So, if you have anything to say, yeah, would you like to say something? Yes, man. No, you can't say anything. Feel free. Yeah. Give the prospect a chance to speak. Amen. Always offer a message of hope. Ha, 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 ha. Amidst what you're going through, God is able. God will see you through. God is our provider. He never fails. He's the best friend I've ever had. Offer hope. Yeah. You're going to come true. With God, you're going to make it. Yeah. God, God is able to see you through. Don't worry. Hallelujah. I join with you in your pain. But, but just remember, God loves you. And, and he's going to see you through. Praise the Lord. Amen. Offer a message of hope. Always communicate the gospel. And the gospel is the death, burial, resurrection. He died that we might live because he loved us. He died for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He died that we might live. He was buried. And he rose again the third day to bring us hope that we can have hope beyond the grave. That's the gospel, everybody. That's the gospel. Always be confident about what you're saying. So don't try to say what you can't say. Say what you're able to say and say it with confidence. Look like you're confident about what you're talking about. Here we are, all right. Always try to give a testimony. Talk about the goodness of God, man. And please, when you're sharing your testimony, don't talk. Leave out the wicked part of the, the negatives of your testimony. Yeah. Share the, 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 the outcome. Share the victories of your testimony. Because after all, that is what really matters. Share the victories of your testimonies. Always be willing 
to give a testimony. Be aware of the impact of your witness. Observe the person. If you see the person, yeah, take a note. And they say, can I leave a word of prayer with you? You mind me praying with you? And the person say, yes. Just start to, you know, draw a little closer. You see a word of prayer. Observe the impact. You know, I, I see that the Lord have his hands on your life. You know, would you mind me coming to pick you up for church? I'd like to take you to church tomorrow. I'd like to, to have you come with me to church. Because you see that the Lord is working on the individual. Praise the Lord. Observe the impact. Always be aware of the person getting too attached to you. No, you have to be careful of that. If they're getting too attached and they're not showing any interest much so to be saved, as they are showing interest in seeing you. And they want you to call them late towards of the night. Want you to call them different. This is also a trap of the enemy that he uses sometimes. People falter in visitation. So look here. You don't want them to be saved more than how they want to be saved. Your interest is for them to be saved. But they must want to be saved also. Amen. Do not do any answer. And especially if you have a meal, go to your way. Um, find goodies for a lady. Um, looking out for a lady's interest. She might just think that you're, you're, you're looking her and that you have some interest in her. The worst a female for a, a male. And as what we are seeing in our society you now, Man is loving man and woman. I love woman. So anybody at all, it works. Please don't get too overly attached. Yeah? Yeah, be connected as a soul winner. And your interest is to win the soul. All right. Um, always give clear direction to your church. And your church schedule. Make sure that the person is aware of where your church is located. That if they want to come, they can. And make sure your church schedule is lined up. That they can know what time to come to church. Always try to exchange contacts. So you must work with a pen and a notepad. Always try to change information. Of course... You must know when the information is becoming overly bearing, but the information is for the purpose of winning souls. And last but not least, be patient and not pushy. Be patient and not pushy. When you're trying to witness the soul, be patient. Amen. So be very tactful. Be graceful. Reach out to lost souls with the love of God and let God work his way in your life. Tonight, I want to close this segment by praying. Amen. And just in closing, I don't know if there's anybody want to type in the chat and ask for prayer. Ask that the Lord, ask for somebody to pray that God will give